independently and antidotally, but still of interest from an anthropological perspective. In the 19th century, another Afri African tribe, the Bashalenge, also began planting hemp around their villages in large plots after a chief convinced them to burn their ancient fetishes, fetishes and instituted a new religion with hemp as a central sacrament. The Bashalenge referred to themselves as the Ben Rianda, meaning the sons of hemp, and greeted each other with the word Moyo, which meant both hemp and life. Like the mythology that formed around cannabis in other parts of the world, for the sons of hemp, their beloved cannabis became identical with the mythological tree of life. As the oldest known piece of woven fiber was made from hemp, along with the fact that the agricultural history of cannabis extends far back beyond recorded history, one could speculate with Dr. Sagan and others that cannabis was indeed the first crop of ancient man. Cannabis hybridizing whether for narcotic or fiber purposes, is certainly known to predate recorded history. Indeed, with its useful fiber, nutritious seeds, and fragrant incense, it could have easily been conceived of as a tree of life in the ancient world. In line with this view are the words of the feminist biblical scholar Tikva Freimerkensky, which would seem to indicate an intimate connection between weaving and the forbidden tree, possibly hinting at a candidate offering both entheogenic and fibrous properties. Quote, the coming of knowledge is stated very simple. The eyes of both of them were opened and they perceived that they were naked, a category they had not perceived in their childlike innocence. But in addition, they are now able to sew themselves loincloths out of the available fig leaves. Somehow, the knowledge of this skill of sewing, the beginning of cultural knowledge, has come with the eating of the fruit of the knowledge of all things. End quote, Frimer Kinski. As Harvard University professor of ethnobotany, Richard Evan Schultz has commented, quote, early man experimented with all plant materials that he could chew and could not have avoided discovering the properties of cannabis, for in his quest for seeds and oils, he certainly ate the sticky tops of a plant. Upon eating hemp, the euphoric, ecstatic, and hallucinatory aspects may have been introduced man to the otherworldly plane from which were emerged religious beliefs perhaps even the concept of deity. The plant became accepted as a special gift of the gods, a sacred medium for communion with the spiritual world, and as such, it has remained in some cultures to the present." End quote. We can be sure that such effects were attributed to the plant by its ancient Near Eastern partakers, just as they have been by the partakers of the plant the world over. Engravings from the time of Esther the son of Esther Ahaddon, and who was associated with cannabis, again depict the sacred tree. Professor Weidengrain postulates that every temple had a holy grove or garden with a tree of life that was taken care of by the king who functioned as a master gardener. By watering and caring for the tree of life, the king gained power over life. As a scribe of the Assyrian king Asurbanipal recorded in 650 BC, quote, we were dead dogs, but our lord king gave us life by placing the herb of life beneath our noses." End quote. This last comment points to an incense, and by its name, the herb of life, we can easily visualize it as the plant depicted in the ancient stone engravings. Interestingly, we find that Astrobanapal's ancient cuneiform library contained recipes for hashish incense, which are generally regarded as copies of much older texts. And this archeological evidence serves to project the origins of hashish back to the earliest beginnings of history. The tree of life, also known as the plant of life and herb of life, is a symbol of primordial antiquity, but its name and recognition as such was a later development. The original name for the symbol guaranteed, guarantees its identification as hemp, as shall be discussed in the genesis and connection of the image with a serpent-like god from the ancient Mesopotamian pantheon. Nearly 700,000 Americans were arrested on marijuana charges last year. That's an enormous waste of law enforcement resources and terribly unfair to those arrested and their families. It's time we stopped arresting adults who smoke marijuana responsibly. For more information, visit Normal's website at www.normal.org or call toll-free 888-67-NORMAL and tell them Willie sent you. Great instructor, 
and the tree of life. Agriculture led to culture, and so it is not surprising to find that the amphibious deity, known variously as Ea, Enki, Owens, and Dagon, was credited with inventing the plow and bringing agriculture to humanity throughout the ancient Near East, and was also said to have started the first civilization as well. As the Babylonian priest Barassus recorded in the 3rd century BC, this being, in the daytime, used to converse with men. He gave them an insight into letters and sciences and every kind of art. He taught them to construct houses, to found temples, to compile laws, and explained to them the principles of geometric knowledge. He made them distinguish the seeds of the earth and showed them how to collect fruits. In short, he instructed them in everything which could soften manners and humanize mankind. From that time, so universal were his instructions, nothing has been added material by way of improvements. From the fragments of Barossus, said to have been recorded in 300 BC, but detailing the older Babylonian religion. Not only was this deity depicted in fish form, he was also often shown in serpent shape or riding a serpent. A number of biblical myths and traditions have their origins with this ancient figure, especially the biblical tales of a flood, which is known to have derived from an earlier Mesopotamian myth of this crafty god. Like Jehovah, Ea was also credited with initiating mankind's creation from the moistened substance of the earth. As well, the story of Eve's creation from the rib of Adam has its predecessor in the tale of the creation of the goddess Ninti to heal the rib of the ailing Anki Ea. Quote, Ninti means the lady of the rib, and the Sumerian word Ti has a double meaning of life as well as rib, so that Ninti could also mean the lady of life. In the Hebrew myth, the woman who was fashioned from Adam's rib was named by him Hawa, meaning life. Hence, one of the most curious features of the Hebrew myth of paradise clearly has its origins in this somewhat crude Sumerian myth. End quote, Professor Hook. In line with this is the view is the hypothesis, hypothesis accepted by a number of scholars, such as the Babylonian historian Professor H. W. F. Sags, that the name of Ea's servant and adopted son Adapa may in fact, quote, be related to the biblical Adam, end quote. If this is correct, then as other scholars have suggested, the story of Adapa, quote, may be regarded as a myth about the first man, end quote a view shared by the eminent Jewish historian Raphael Patai and English philosopher Robert Graves. Quote, Another source of the Genesis fall of man is the Akkadian myth of Adapa. Adapa, son of Ea, the Babylonian god of wisdom, was attacked in the Persian Gulf by a storm bird while catching fish for his father's crease, and it broke its wings. The bird proved to have been the south wind. Ea summoned Adapa to explain his violence and warned him that having displeased Anu, king of heaven, the gods would offer him the food and drink of death, which he must refuse. Anu, however, learning of this indiscreet disclosure, foiled Ea by offering Adapa the bread of life and the water of life, and when he refused them at his father's orders, grimly sending him back to earth as a perverse mortal. This myth supplies the theme of the serpent's warning to Eve that God had deceived her about the properties of the forbidden fruit, end quote, Robert Graves and Professor Rafael Patai.